வெல்கம் பேக் ஸோ இந்த லாஸ்ட் லெக்சர் வி ஹேட் அன் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் டிஸ்கஷன் ஆன் த சர்ஃபேஸ் பிளாஸ் ஒன் பொலாரிட்டான் ஸோ ஐ திங்க் ஃபார் த ஆன் வீடியோ ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ஆர் பீப்புள் ஹூ ஆர் வாட்சிங் த வீடியோ சம் ஆஃப் த செக்ஷன்ஸ் மேட் ஹவ் பீன் அ லிட்டில் யூ நோ கன்ஃபியூசிங் பிகாஸ் ஐ வாஸ் டேக்கிங் ஆஃப் ஸ்க்ரீன் கொஷின்ஸ் ஸோ இட் வாஸ் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் டிஸ்கஷன் அண்ட் ஐ அர்ஜ் யூ டு நோ சம் பார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் இட் ஐ ரிப்பீட் இட் ஸோ ஐ ஹோப் யூ அண்டர்ஸ்ட் த காண்டெக்ஸ்ட் ஸோ ப்ளீஸ் திங்க் அபவுட் இட் அண்ட் ப்ளீஸ் ரீச் அவுட் டு அஸ் இன் த இன் த லைவ் இன்ட்ராக்ஷன்ஸ் ரைட் so that we can discuss it further i can clarify your doubts more specifically i would be happy to do that you know so it when you ask questions it clarifies concept for you and for me also i think i can communicate it better so that will be a great thing please uh, the on on screen uh, or the you know, live audience on the sorry on the youtube audience please join the live discussions you know which are posted on the nptel platform all right so let's uh, now come to the last topic that i want to cover so far we understood what a plasma on polariton is and so on what are the benefits how do we excite it exciting it is a very important aspect which i have not talked about so for the completeness sake i want to finish this with that i'll close my discussion on surface plasma on polaritons so the idea is okay there are these plasmons which are exciting uh, excited on the interface but they have a higher kx than k0 kx is greater than k0 it immediately means that if i have a simple free standing or you know uh, free space propagating uh, plane wave i cannot directly couple into the spp the reason being there are two things that we have to obey okay so let's say when i have my sp light line like this and let let's say my spp if i come in with a particular wavelength let's say at frequency some frequency i assume this is my omega not incident one okay so my k not is this guy and my k spp is this guy okay so clearly we understand in the basic introduction that uh, k momentum translate i mean k is translating to momentum right wave vector translates to momentum h cross k h cross k spp is the momentum of the spp and this is much greater than momentum of k not free space light because of the momentum mismatch you cannot couple light so you simply you can't shine light and then it will happen we have to play some tricks and what are those tricks the idea is that we cannot directly if i take simple semi infinite metal sheet and air interface i cannot excite a plasmon on that i have to play some trick by which i actually come through a higher index medium and then so the idea is this if i have air this is my light line but now if i come through a higher index medium this is my light line the slope reduces we saw that already refractive index index increases and slope reduces now if i come through a higher index medium now you see that there is an intersection of the light in the high high index medium and my spp so at that wavelength or at that frequency i can excite okay a plasmon polariton spp how do i do that how can i excite how can i because i am talking about as you know if i have simple metal air there is no way i can excite a plasmon with a just a light beam shining a light beam okay if i just a normal light beam i have to do some tricks i have to come through higher index medium and the re- the way we do that practically is what is known as kretschmann configuration or kretschmann geometry wherein you can think of let's say deposit a metal on top of this is a metal i deposit on top of a glass prism of refractive index let's say this is 1.5 okay now through the prism i shine light on the metal so here of course my k not is free space wavelength free space uh, propagation constant the moment it goes into the into the prism you have k si02 which is a higher than the k not of course and now you can actually have a parallel component of the momentum here so i can split my k k k this is uh, k si02 and this is k perpendicular si02 and k parallel si02 there are two components to the wave vector of light in the dielectric and when i have that situation i can change my angle in such a way that at a particular angle my k of si02 k parallel of si02 is equal to k spp or you know in, i think i was calling it kx okay both notations are same so i can have that scenario when i reach that i can excite a surface plasmon polariton 
Wait a minute, how can I excite a surface plus one polar return? The reason is, there are two surface plus one polar returns that are possible. One is the surface plus one polar return here, which is uh, at the SPP at air metal interface. Okay, I can have another SPP of similar, I mean, you will actually calculate it. So this is going to be my SPP at the, to the right of the light line, the dielectric. So this is SPP in or at rather not in, at glass metal interface. Okay, so when I come through the prism, the momentum of SPP at the glass prism interface is always going to be larger than the momentum of uh, light in the glass. So you cannot excite at the, you cannot excite a plasmon polariton at this interface. But if your metal is sufficiently thin, this is thin metal. So in thin metal we saw, if metal thickness is let's say 10 nanometers, we saw that some amount of electromagnetic energy gets channeled through the metal, right? And it gets tunneled and it can actually excite a plasmon at the air and the glass interface. This is air, sorry, air and uh, metal interface, not glass. Air metal interface, you can excite a plasmon polariton. Okay. So that's a very important point to note. If your metal thickness is very large, there is all of the energy will get attenuated and the SPP will not be excited. But if your metal thickness is small, let's say 10, 20, 30 nanometers or so on, for the typical silver and gold films, some of the energy will get coupled to the air metal interface and it excites a plasmon on that. Okay, So that's that's the trick here. You can excite plasmons this way. Okay, uh, another interesting question is what happens to the reflected wave? So let's say I'm shining this light wave like this. And also remember this is a TM incidence. The magnetic field is actually perpendicular to the plane of incidence here. We need to have a transverse magnetic wave. If you have a TE wave, you cannot excite a plasmon polariton on that. right? So I think we can make a nice question for you in the assignment. We'll try to give you two, three geometries wherein, you know, we have TM, TA incidences and then the interfaces one and two and so on. So we'll have four of them and you identify which interface you'll have the SPP generated. All right. So you have to think about it carefully. Okay. The, the, uh, the information will be there in the graph, but you, uh, in, the, in the schematic, but you need to identify what is what. All right. And what will be the intensity of the reflected wave? When I can have an intensity of reflected wave, which is... Uh, Basically, if I have, if I'm not exciting an SPP, most of the light I can assume is getting reflected. But the moment I excite an SPP, some of the light is getting propagated along the interface and it is getting absorbed or lost. Okay, it's not coming back to the detector. That's why if you look at a uh, reflection spectrum, I'll see a very sharp dip in the reflection spectrum at the SPP. All right. So that's what happens to the reflected wave. And if the thickness is very large, of course, there's no SPP that is excited. Okay. So we will try to actually generate some of this data for you know couple of cases wherein you know thick metal, thin metal and then you know SPP in the air and dielectric and so on. We try to give you the graphs from the reflected, uh, reflection data. You can guess what the answer is going to be. Okay. So that is what, that is how you can excite. But it sounds like a very tedious process of actually you know depositing a metal film on top of glass and exciting it. Is it? Uh, it's not very convenient, right? So and w there are other geometries as well that are much more uh, popular in the community, research community. One of them is what is called as grating coupling. Okay, this the top picture is basically grating coupling. So using a grating, I couple. So what I do in this case is, let's say I have metal, and then I deposit some sort of a grating on it. Grating essentially is like lines of some periodicity, right? We talked about this in the in the spatial frequencies case. You can have some lines like this separated by some periodicity and width. If you have a grating, the grating itself has a k vector, which is given by 2 pi by periodicity. This is my grating periodicity uh, wave vector. So now I can have a scenario wherein my SPP's propagation constant is equal to the, the parallel component of the, you know, the wave, uh, the wave in the SiO2 or in the, in this case, I think this is a incoming through the glass. And then there is a grating vector. So at the combination of these two, you can have an SPP that is generated. If you're coming from air, of course, this is K parallel in air. If you're coming through the SiO2, this is K parallel in the dielectric. Okay. And then you have the uh, the grating constant. So the grating supplies the additional momentum. The momentum mismatch is going to be satisfied through the grating. And that is why you can have grating coupling. 
and you can have the plasma on excited so this is a very very prom uh, prominent and easy way of doing it you just prepare a grating on top of a metal sheet and i shine light on the grating the grating takes care of the coupling i don't need to worry about you know momentum mismatch all right and historically there was another configuration that was used that is actually what is called as auto geometry wherein instead of actually depositing the metal on the grating which makes it uh, non reusable i have a metal film and i bring the grating very close to the interface and then i shine light at if i shine light at greater than the critical angle there is total internal reflection only a small amount of the wave propagates to the this interface and because it's a very small gap it can excite uh high k waves or you know higher in, higher k vector waves which are spps on the interface so this is auto geometry again this is not very practical thing because how do you bring the prism so close to the air because if you look at the attenuation constant that will be you know a few nanometers tens of nanometers maybe how do you bring it so close right so uh, that's a challenge and that's why it's not very practical right now all right so the other technique which is also again very interesting is instead of the same idea as the grating but instead of having a periodic arrangement let's say i have a dot one structure which is very very small when i have a very very small structure we know that it has very high spatial frequencies so that high spatial frequencies in this case you know we are calling it as a dot let's say there is a metal film on top of it there is a dot of something and then there is glass as well so now when you shine light the 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 spatial frequencies of the dot take care of the momentum mismatch so light will couple into the plasma polarity on the the relation right the plasma uh, the momentum conservation kspp equal to k parallel plus uh, k dot or k, uh, the, the spatial frequencies in the dot will take care of it and that is why we can actually couple through a nanoparticle as well if you have a nanoparticle it will excite plasmons and you can actually map it out people have done near field experiments showing you how the plasma propagation uh, looks like on a film wherein you are coupling in through a light beam all right so these are the various uh, techniques that are used in the community for exciting uh, surface plasma polaritons so it's a whole field in itself and as i was talking about it in the last uh, discussion that you know you can actually have more scenarios wherein you have two spps you have you can have anti bonding bonding and so on long range spps there's a lot of work that has been done in the literature so anyway that is a subject matter for another course for now i just want to show you one of the applications again finally of spps lspr we had some applications we discussed but we saw that lspr resonances are always broad it turns out that spp is a much much sharper resonance this is a reflection spectrum taken for uh met metal dielectric uh, let's say epsilon 1 is air and this is air and this is my dielectric epsilon 3 something glass maybe and there's metal so for three different configurations you see that you know in one case there is uh, no excitation of the plasmon polariton that's why the black and then there is shift in this there is a sharp dip which comes in so if you look at the if you change the angle of incidence with the prism on a prism and then look at the transmission you will see that there is a very very sharp dip that occurs at spp excited wavelength and that is dependent on the dielectric constant so you can have you can have an spp generated at the interface on this interface let's say and that will be very very sensitive to the neighboring environment even if the sing a single molecule level detection is possible a single molecule comes in a you know drop of additional let's say you have water medium and then there is a single molecule that comes and attaches near the surface the spp wavelength you can actually figure out from that spp sorry shift you can figure out from that so that that sensitive so ultra sensitive molecular diagnostics we mentioned as an application for lspr that is also possible with spps all right so this is one of the applications so with this i hope i gave you a flavor of what uh, the field of plasmonics is trying to do right now we'll again extend it further in the next week all right thank you so much for your attention and we'll come back take care bye